Things you didn't know out. about Walt Disney World. Oh, Open October 1st, 1971. Tickets were crazy cheap when it first opened. Can you guys see bucks. the price on that? Three fifty. Three fifty. Three dollars and fifty cents. Three fifty. For uh, That's for the Loch Ness monster. For adults, a dollar fifty for kids. Now, of course, you had to pay extra for rides because when this opened, you still had the 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 e ride tickets and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So you get a little booklet. And then you would, and that's yeah. and that's how you would actually ride the rides. That didn't get it's like changed. Like Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. You got to pay for everything. You don't get to reuse it. <laughs> uh, really quick over here, uh, Christian Pear says, "When are you going to be playing Jackbox? We're going to be playing Jackbox here in about 15 minutes or so, Christian. Uh, we're going to get through Walt Disney World here, and then we got a couple other things, and then we're going to get some Jackbox games." Uh, where was I? Oh, and that so that didn't change. The tickets didn't change until about the early 80s when Epcot. Uh, got there. Now, Epcot, do you guys know what it stands for? Um, the crappiest place on earth, unless you would just want to go drink. No, they've changed it, man. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, they have, but yeah. Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. And there it was built by combining two different ideas, because Walt's original idea was a futuristic city, but by the mid-70s, the Imagineers were like, ah, we can't really do this. So on one side, one group wanted the park to be a they future... They ran out of imagination. They wanted to be a futuristic display of modern technology, while the other side wanted it to be kind of like a permanent World's Fair. So they combined the two, and then that's how you ended up with Epcot. I think if you go on the ride that goes in the giant ball, it actually covers that aspect of it where they talk about how he wanted to build like a community. I think that ended up turning into the villages, but he wanted to, he wanted to build like a community and it shows like what it would look like in the future. That but, is uh, called yeah. Spaceship Earth, my friend. There you go. So well, I like how they turned like their failure. They monetized their failure. They're like, oh, sorry, oh. we couldn't do it. That's so now Disney... we're just going to tell you That's we couldn't do Disney. it. Yeah, That's what right? Disney does best, baby. <laughs> That's what it does, man. If something fails, they just repackage it and turn it into something else to make money off of it. So here you have the Magic Kingdom tunnels or utilidors. And they're not technically underground. They built these because Walt at one point saw one of the characters walking around Disneyland, Disneyland. without yeah. its head on. And he's like, we can't have that. So we need to make sure that they're down below. So they didn't actually dig down to build the tunnels. They built, built the up. tunnels, and then they built the park on top of the tunnels. That's how like that was. It was all swamp. Yep. You can't go down no more. Now, the tallest structures, which include Cinderella Castle and the Tower of Terror, they are 199 feet tall. Oh, here's another. This is what the underground tunnels. Tell me that would scare the crap out of you if you're walking. Hey, I got some there. pictures from the 80s um, Disney World, and it was like when the, the dwarfs, they would just put a giant head on them yeah. and their arms would just Terrifying. hang to the side. All right. Yeah. Here's a mission. I Whoever find has picture. old 80s or 90s photos of them in Disneyland, we're going to do a live stream where we're going to relive them highlights, dude. So round up that shit. Yeah, I got to find I got to find Fresh Prince's mom somewhere. And you guys still got to find Fresh Prince's mom. It's like so, Disney Backrooms edition. <laughs> he's on his way to the casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> so the tallest structures which include Cinderella Castle and Tower of Terror are 199 feet tall do you guys know why they're only 199 feet tall storms no airplanes I'm gonna guess some, FCC regulations yeah some some law about being 200 feet yep 200 feet tall means you gotta put that red beacon on top due to uh, yeah. federal aviation regulations now back to uh Frank's giant ball of hope over here that he just loves. The ball of hope. And the ball of hope. Spaceship Earth. I used Earth. to think it was a giant golf ball when I was a kid. I did too. I mean, it looks like one, right? Yeah. Okay, like you're ready to tee off and hit it. So, uh, it has an interesting drainage system because when it rains, could you imagine if the rain just lit, like hit it and just like pulled off of it? Well, it doesn't happen because they have a drainage system that prevents that where the rain drains through spaces in all of the triangular tiles flows through a system of ducts and uh and drains and eventually it ends up in the world showcase lagoon so all that water just ends up right out there now the aquarium at seas with nemo and friends pavilion mm -hmm. has 5.7 million gallons of tank volume 
and it is the second largest aquarium in the United States, sixth largest in the world. It's a lot of water. Uh, big time water. Deep water. A lot of water. And finally, Animal Kingdom's official logo actually featured a dragon. Because the park was going to have a land of mythical creatures that was going to be called Beastly Kingdom. This never came to fruition. Uh, and it's now actually where Pandora, the world of Avatar, is at. That's where they were planning that. And now it's where Avatar is. And that's things you didn't know about uh, Walt Disney World. <laughs>